Welcome back. Uh, well, the market's doing well and financials are leading a 2.5% higher on the bank nifty. So that's looking really strong. Uh, and in fact, let's not talk about some financials. We should focus on Shriram Transport Finance to get a sense of their view on the CV cycle, whether it started to see an upcycle and which segments are witnessing growth. Umesh Revankar, Vice Chairman and MD at Shriram Transport is now joining us. Mr. Revankar, good morning. Thanks a lot for joining us. That's the first question then. What's your view on the CV cycle? Is it now firmly in an upcycle? And are you seeing benefit of that on ground in terms of your numbers? Uh, yeah, good morning. The uh, CV cycle is definitely uh, uh, moving up uh, and month on month it is strengthening. September uh, was, numbers were all time uh, high in the recent times. The demand is definitely for the uh, construction equipment in the sense uh, the dumper and tipper. The, the construction uh, is uh, something which is uh, in high demand. Uh, real estate and infrastructure projects are going on stream and that's really helping the demand. Plus, with, along with the infrastructure, uh, the demand for the movement of the steel cement is also improving. So heavy vehicle is witnessing continuous month-on-month -month, uh, growth. So I think uh, the, the, with the heavy segment growing, the, all the LCV, ICV segment also is keeping up the pace. And uh, I think the demand is al almost in all the sector. And uh, I think the, car the way it is moving, it may continue for uh, some more time. Okay. So what do you see? Uh, Mr. Evankar, good morning. Always uh, good talking with you. Um, this rise in fuel costs, uh, you know, we've seen an overall up move, what do you think the impact of that would be on freight rates and eventually on demand? The fuel price went up in between and post the government reducing tax, then it has come, uh, come back. Uh, in fact, the fuel price uh, is uh, at uh, last uh, year's December uh, level. So I don't think that's uh, that whatever uh, uh, the uh, 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 impact of the fuel price has happened during the peak of the uh, increase uh, around March, April. After that, it has come down. So I don't think it will have any negative impact. In fact, the international crude price coming down uh, will have a, a positive impact. And I don't think there is further surprise on the uh, fuel price. And when demand is good, when the economy is going strong, normally the ability to pass on will be much higher. And uh, the, the operators are uh, able to pass on all the fuel increase or whatever the input cost increase to the uh, either shipper or to the consumer. Okay. So since you said that the CV cycle is, you know, definitely moving up and September CV sales have been in an all-time high, would you want to scale up your own uh, full year forecast on what growth would look like? Uh, we were speaking to uh, Sundaram Finance a couple of days ago and they said that this is just the start of a multi-year up cycle in the commercial vehicle space. Would you agree? And if yes, what would the growth look like for you? Now, see, we had given the guidance of 12% uh, growth on our uh, area on standalone commercial vehicle uh, activity basis. And that will remain for uh, the rest of the year. Uh, we don't want to change the guidance in between. But however, uh, if the demand keeps going up, we we'll definitely uh, uh, will uh, uh, take the what I call the, uh, the market share uh, of the uh, change. So we'll be able to, uh, we, are, we have that ability and uh, the network to uh, scale up the business. So right now, I feel uh, we are in the uh, sweet spot and that should continue for at least six months. But interest rate hike and the impact of that is something which you need to be a little cautious about. So uh, overall, uh, we plan to grow uh, on, as a combined entity, 15%. And uh, the earlier guidance will continue to remain. So combined entity growth will be about 15% and you hold on to your earlier guidance. I take your point. I mean, higher interest rates, higher inflation could hit demand in the near term. Uh, that is the uncertainty. But I wanted to ask you about your restructured book. In terms of asset quality, what are you looking at and how much of your restructured book can go bad? See, our uh, total restructured book was 1% uh, of the AEM. So it is insignificant. And even that has performed quite well. So that had not given us any headache. And uh, it's a very small uh, portion of our book. So I think asset quality is all time uh, improving uh, because all the sectors and segments have come back and bounced back. And 
uh, including the school and the staff transportation, which was the last to come back to normalcy, even that is doing well. So we don't really see any challenge. So quarter on quarter, we expect the asset quality to improve. Okay, expect the asset quality to improve quarter on quarter. And uh, just coming back to that earlier discussion that we were having about, you know, uh, some of your peers talking about this being a, the start of a multi-year upcycle in commercial vehicles. Generally, when the commercial vehicle uptrend starts, it lasts for about three, four years. Is that your view this time around as well? And what's your own uh, thought on, uh, you know, how the, uh, how the progress could take place? I, I do definitely uh, agree with that because... This time around, the upcycle had delayed because of the COVID and the price hike in the new vehicle, uh, new vehicle price. The, uh, there was a postponement of uh, upcycle, and that postponement will give us a longer uh, upcycle. So I feel uh, this time the uh, upcycle will remain for at least three to four years. The earliest earlier peak was uh, on commercial vehicle. 1 million units and uh, last year we ended up with around 700,000 units. So we have a lot, lot of uh, 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 gap to catch up. So it will take another two to three years to catch up. Then normally the uh, we cross the earlier peak and go further. So I believe uh, it may take three to four years to reach the peak uh, before it may start slowing down. Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Mr. Hevankar, and all the best uh, for the future. That's Sriram Transport. By the way, just take a look at the market. Still holding on. The Nifty is up still about 300-odd points. Bank Nifty up 945 points. We haven't built on to our gains, but we haven't lost any either. So, holding pretty firm. Bharti, by the way, is at a fresh 52-week high this morning. Uh, very positive commentary coming, in, uh, coming out from the 5G uh, conference recently, uh, speaking about the rollout timelines, etc., so, Bharti looking pretty good. Talking about 52-week high, Sipla is at a fresh 52-week high this morning. So, is Metro Brands, Taj, GVK and a couple of others uh, in that space as well looking quite good. So, all in all, um, holding fort in the market. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Sonia, we're back exactly at the Friday's high. Uh, so, 17,189 is uh, where the index is at. 187 was the high point. Uh, which means that, I mean, the market's given given up a little bit. I mean, the high was 17,235 today. Uh, so, about 45 uh, points, 45, 50 points off the day's high uh, with uh, a little over 30 minutes, 40 minutes behind us in terms of trade. Just a couple of other names which were not there in uh, this kind of form uh, when we sort of referenced stocks earlier. IDFC First is up 6%. Uh, there is a Bandhan Bank, which is now up a full 4%. Angel, of course, we highlighted with a 6, 6.5% 6 pop. Chola Mandalam Finance is up about 4.6%. Schneider is up uh, 4 JK Tire is up uh, 7%. <laughs> LNT Finance is up about 45 Karnataka Bank, I mean, uh, is up uh, 682 You know, month and a half, uh, Karnataka Bank, I think, was... Uh, is, it's, it's seen a, a substantial move. IDFC Limited is the other one, which is uh, almost at 70. That's a 4.5% move higher. Uh, but that's it. I mean, in terms of the large volume-led move so far... Uh, in the day and eight is to one Sonia in terms of uh, advances to declines so it's overwhelmingly uh, in the green mm -hmm. Adani Wilmer has turned south I mean it's down two percent uh, but that's about it with the uh, volumes Ambuja is down a little bit as well so uh, you know not doing uh, not participating on the uh, upside uh, yesterday of course these stocks saw a fair bit of profit taking Sonia absolutely I mean it's hard to find uh, losers right in a, in a market like today few and far between as they call it but M&M finance is really the stock of the moment I mean just look at that soar now nine percent higher of course the asset quality has improved for M&M finance as we know Abhishek was telling us a while back uh, but not just that dispersals have gone up on a month-on-month -month basis dispersals are up 10 percent uh, so the economy is coming back and you're seeing it in some of these names like M&M Finance even the collection efficiency has picked up quite a bit in fact uh, M&M Finance and Indusin Bank have both reported uh, strong business updates uh, for the month gone by Abhishek is here uh, to give us a lowdown on that Abhishek over to you 
Uh, well, Sonia, to begin with, the Anderson Bank, it looks like they might have gained market share on a YOI and quarter on quarter basis. So sequentially, that is quarter on quarter, uh, deposit growth are the best in the last five quarters and loan growth is the best in the last four quarters. Loan book market share, as per my calculation, stands at 2.07%, which is a five basis point on a YOI basis and about seven basis point on a sequential basis. So deposit momentum was stronger, 14.65% growth on a YOI basis and about 4.2% sequentially. While the loan growth was strong at 17.6% YOI and about 4.7% sequentially, which means that the CD ratio or credit to deposit ratio might have improved both YOI and quarter on quarter. The CASA ratio on the flip side that declined to 42.4 when compared to 43.2% in the previous quarter. MM Finance over there for the first time they have given a picture on their asset quality in the preview uh, numbers, wherein the gross NPA or the stage 3, the, as they call, is at 7% when compared to 8% in the previous quarter. Disbursals have remained strong at about 4,080 crores for the month of September, which is up about 9% or 9.1% on a month-on-month -month basis. Collection efficiency has improved for the month of uh, September. Their collection efficiency was at 98% when compared to 96% in August, as well as 96% when compared to the June number. Back to you. Okay, thanks Abhishek for that. Well, I think Marico is the only one that's not participating in the upmove today because of uh, a weak outlook on growth. Mangalam is here to give us uh, the lowdown on that. Mangalam, over to you. Well, it was a muted second quarter update coming in for Marico itself. The India business posted a low single-digit volume growth. Remember the previous quarter there was a negative growth. The company did guide for you know volume to expand in the second half of this year. So to that extent, the second quarter is a bit of a bridge quarter. The consolidated revenue in the quarter as well grew uh, or at a low single digit on a year-on-year basis. And if you just take a look at the internals out there, parachute coconut oil, which is the mainstay of the company, saw a low single digit volume decline, whereas value-added hair oils as well grew in low single digits. Importantly, Safola, which uh, did not perform well in the first quarter, has actually begun to perform well, and that's primarily because the prices of edible oil came down and the company had to pass that on. And this is where the problem is, because every time, you know, the company sees the prices going down, they have to pass it on to consumers, well, they are stuck with high inventory, as a result of which gross margins actually contracted quarter on quarter. The company is still spending on advertisements, so as a result of which, despite year-on-year -year gross margins being higher, it hasn't passed on to the EBITDA. The EBITDA is constant, and as a result of that, we've seen the net profit be, uh, you know, lower than the same time last year also because of higher tax expenditure. As a result of all these things, the stock is lower in today's trading session. Okay, Mangalam, thanks a lot for that. Yes, that's Marico, one of the few stocks which is actually down in trade. Uh, the market is making another move on the upside now, by the way, so don't lose sight of that. A uh, couple of stocks that stand out. Uh, IT stocks are making a big move today. Uh, it's, you know, names like HCL Tech, Wipro, uh, Birla Soft, Infosys. The last bit of rally is because of the IT stocks, the nifty IT moving to the highest point of the day, United Spirits is moving higher, Hindustan Aeronautics, a lot of these stocks doing well. Uh, but let's get you some uh, snippets of the very interesting conversation that we had with Mark Mobius, who believes that more rate hikes are in store. Uh, and he also remains quite optimistic on India. In fact, he believes that India is one of the best markets to invest in. Let's listen in. I think more is in store for the markets. And as you know, for the S&P 500, we're right at the support level. If it breaks below the support level, then we're going to see uh, more blood on the streets. The interesting thing is that India is really uh, bucking this trend. It's amazing what the Indian market has done. And it speaks very well for the policies that the government has pursued. And the general buoyancy of the Indian market is very good. The problem with India is that the, up to now, they've been rather restrictive and, and the market is rather smaller, uh, less liquid. But the interesting thing is that if India is added to the various uh, bond indices, emerging market bond indices, uh, that could mean more and more flows into the Indian bond market. And of course, that could be accompanied by more flows into the equity market as well. Well, we're looking at both uh, software, uh, persistent systems, for example, would be one. And we're looking at infrastructure-related stocks uh, like Apollo, um, Apollo 2. So these are the kind of stocks we're looking at. We think uh, those are the stocks that will perform very well going forward. India is uh, really uh, beginning to take more and more 
manufacturing share from China. And I think the uh, government policy, this, the so-called uh, Gati Shekti uh, policy, uh, uh, you know, speed, speeding up the bureaucracy is going to be very, very good for India. We, have, of course, continue to look at India for possibilities of uh, additions. Uh, but as you know, in our portfolios, we move very, very slowly. When we uh, have a stock that we think is going to be good, we hang on to it. And that's the reason why, for example, the stocks that we have in India, we haven't sold. Uh, we continue to hold them. And the same thing is true in Taiwan, although in Taiwan, the weighting has been pretty high. So we want to uh, reduce that by either decreasing Taiwan or increasing other com countries like India. Okay, that is Mark Mobius uh, in, uh, on, on India has been steadfastly bullish on uh, uh, the Indian market and his uh, picks, etc. Worked beautifully. I mean, the market's uh, doing uh, very, very well, 326 odd points. But Sonia, I've decided to that we will Hindi in the next Why? <laughs> I mean, Anuj se, Anuj se uh, hai. <laughs> 20 साल के एक्सपीरियंस के के साथ आप जरूर देखिए CNBC आवाज आज से <laughs> so Anuj is leaving us and uh, of course he's going to be here in the same uh, newsroom Next but door, just right? moving from one studio to another so let's all congratulate Anuj on becoming the new managing editor of CNBC आवाज and uh, rightfully so Anuj we're going to miss you. Yeah, but I'll be here, Sonia. Thanks, yeah. thanks a lot, Prashant. Thanks a lot. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, my role is expanding, so I moved to the other studio, to the studio right at the, next to us, uh, okay. and uh, become the managing editor of CNBC Awards, which is, a, a, of course, a great responsibility. Uh, you know, I, I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed, uh, you know, being here for the last 19 years. Uh, okay. And as I said, I'll still be here. I'll still be presenting my uh, setup in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, I'll still be there in editor's roundtable. So. Uh, I'm not going to leave uh, my, you know, uh, English audience of CNBC TV 18. I'll still be there and uh, you'll still have to endure me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, it's a bittersweet moment, right? Because we've uh, anchored together, we've like uh, worked together for almost 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, of course, I mean, Prashant, you can you can also no, chime please, in. Please, you I can mean, chime in. <laughs> but uh, if there's anyone from the three of us who uh, who has fluency in Hindi, it's Anuj. So. <laughs> Maybe Hindi is not bad. Maybe Hindi is bad. Well, Prashant is know, a I, actually Prashant I, is a Delhiite. Uh, you know, he of course uh, well, his, his, his name suggests that you know people <laughs> people think people confuse him for uh, being you know for a Keralaite, but he's not. He's actually a Delhi. He's actually you know, a Delhi. You know, I'm a Keralaite, but uh, born and brought up in Delhi, so. Yeah. Uh, so are, are we going to see Hindi's you move studios as well, Prashant? <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, it's next door, right? So we pop in and Anuj we'll pops pop back in. We pop in and out, yeah. okay. But for all our viewers, right, who are used to seeing Anuj here, he's going to keep coming and going, so you won't miss him too much. Yeah. But Anuj, uh, onwards and upwards, that's all I can say. Best wishes to you and great man for a great role. And I'm sure you'll do a complete justice. You know, saal ka experience hai bhai. <laughs> <laughs> no, th thank you to all of you. Thank you to all my team and uh, thank you to all my leadership team, of course, uh, Rahul, Santosh, Shireen, Lata, Shankar, you know, all of uh, you who have, uh, you know, uh, kept confidence in me and, uh, you know, uh, uh, had faith in me. And now that, you know, I make this transition, uh, uh, all I can say is all the best. Uh, you know, it's just uh, CNBC TV 18 has perhaps been the strongest brand uh, in Indian media. And, uh, you know, I'm feeling lucky and privileged to be part of this for the last uh, 19 years. And as I said, I'll still be part of this and I remain with the network. So thank you so much, guys. Okay, you're going to take it to new heights, but don't forget, you still have to share your lunch with me <laughs> every single day, right? Absolutely. Without a doubt. <laughs> that goes without a doubt. Okay, well, let's slip into a quick break, teary-eyed all of us. So take a quick break. On the other side, we'll speak to Bharat Madan of Escorts, Kubota, who will be with us uh, to talk about their September tractor sales performance. All right, welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. Uh, still going strong for the market. m and uh, just a while back told us that they have raised their full-year tractor guidance for the industry from 3 to 5% earlier to 5% plus now. So they're very optimistic there. We've invited Escorts Kubota as well. Uh, they reported a strong tractor sales in September with a growth of over 38% year-on-year. The company has said that macroeconomic factors and the farm sentiment remains positive. Bharat Madan, the group CFO at Escorts Kubota, joins us now. Mr. Madan, good morning. Just a couple of minutes ago, m and raised their forecast for the full year. Would you want to do the same? Hello. Yes, Mr. Madan, is my voice reaching you? We're losing you, Sonia, in between. Okay, can you hear me now? 
Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I was uh, trying to tell you about M&M that raised its guidance for the full year just a while back. Would you want to do the same? Hello. Okay, I don't think he can hear me. So what we'll do is we'll just sort of take a break from that conversation. Uh, the market, by the way, is still intact. The, look at the Sensex. It's now up almost 1,300 points, right? We're back in the days high, Sonia. I mean, there was that 40, 50 point shakeout, which mm -hmm. had happened, uh, which basically took us down to the to Friday's high. But, uh, I mean, just in uh, double the time, uh, you know, half the time, we've uh, kind of gained all of those uh, sort of uh, losses, intraday losses back. And we're up full 2% now. So, mm -hmm. absolutely rock solid day. Uh, and very little by way of uh, hesitation. I mean, I think we'll have to project levels higher now because if yeah. the U.S. market uh, rally continues, it's been a powerful uh, move. Uh, but if it continues and doesn't uh, show shockers along the way, throw shockers along the way in terms of, you know, big down days, etc., I mean, you'll have to kind of watch out for uh, where uh, next levels, etc., are. I mean, I would imagine, uh, you know, the... Uh, the next number to watch would be about 17,291, which was the low on the 23rd of September. That was a very large uh, move and there was a gap area as well. So uh, that's still some, I mean, that's about 50, 60 points away. But the ferocity of the move, very, very strong. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think anyone would have expected the move to be this sharp, right? There was a pullback expected, but I don't think 1,300 points in the Sensex was predicted by anyone. Well, such is the market, I guess. But let's try and re-establish that connection with Bharat Madan of Escorts. Um, Mr. Madan, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, Sonia. Good okay, morning. great. Good morning. Just wanted to ask you about what the growth forecast is, because, you know, your peers like m &M have raised their forecast for the full year. Would you want to do the same? Yeah, Sonia, so I'll just give you one data point. If you look at the first six months of this, Fiscal, the industry has already grown more than 10% now. So even if you assume a flat industry in the balance of the year, you will still grow more than 5%. So obviously the guidance, I think, what the peers are giving, I think is right. So we have been saying it will be mid-single digit growth, so it can be anywhere between 5 to 7% now. I think looking at the way the industry has done so far. 5 to 7% growth, all right. Uh, can you tell us about how uh, you're expecting the next couple of months to shape up? Because the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association was telling us that at the retail end, uh, tractor sales are still down. So perhaps there's a lot of inventory stocking. Uh, your thoughts? Hello. Uh, Mr. Madan, uh, can you tell us what the retail trends are looking like? Because, you know, there has been a bit of pressure over there. So, Sonia, retail and certain pockets of the country obviously have been impacted because of the low rainfall, especially in the eastern side, you know, the UP, eastern area, West Bengal, Odisha, so certain Jharkhand. So, certain pockets have been impacted, but retail have not been very good. But the delayed monsoon obviously has uh, caught up, you know, and, and the overall rainfall still is above normal. So so we expect the coming season will obviously be good for those sectors. So even though retail may be low in the current period, uh, but there are certain sections which are doing extremely well on retail side. So the Central Indian Belt, like MP or Rajasthan or Gujarat, are doing extremely well on the retail side. So overall, yes, with the festive season gets peopled, there is some pressure because the money is still not in the hands of the farmer. So some delay happens, I think, by the time the market picks up. But October will be a big month for retail, and that should set the trend. And we'll come to know in a better by end of this month how the things are going to be for the full year. But is it uh, the farmer data uh, said that uh, sales uh, are down 1.5% in September, retail sales. Is that is that normal, Mr. Madan? No, so retail this time is not going to be low because ultimately the registration data may show something else. The registration happens to the lag, you know, which is what the retail data is getting captured now. But only the retail numbers are not September, reported. Uh, actual data, September actual numbers will not be down. Unlike what the... Okay. Yeah, because the retail, what the, what the numbers are being quoted is the registration data from the RTOs, you mm -hmm. know, which happens to the lag. So the actual retail numbers are much higher than last year. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Madan, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining us. So both those tractor manufacturers scaling up their estimates for the full year. Escort saying that the growth could be about 5 to 7 percent and m and saying growth for the industry could be 5 percent plus. It's been a um, rollicking ride for those stocks as well. In the last three months, Escorts is up 45 percent. But let's shift focus to the world of commodities now. Manisha Gupta is joining in. Manisha, what's the commodity that you're tracking this morning? Well, Sonia, if you are a commodity bull, this Nomi clearly has given you a lot of gift early today morning. The overnight session has been just phenomenal. I mean, take a look at the prices. 
8% uh, up in silver, 2% up in gold, and 5% of a jump up in case of crude oil prices also is something that we are looking at. If you look at the last one fortnight itself, we have gained by nearly $9 in case of the crude oil prices. So all of those losses that we've seen in the past quarter really seems to be uh, making up right now. So when you look at the crude, we've come back all the way from 81 to 89 on your screens right now. And the WTI crude oil prices have seen a similar jump up coming in into the markets there. We still, as I said, we saw 20% of a decline in the previous quarter. There have been concerns about weak demand. That is still somewhere into the markets there. But now the concerns also are coming in sense of supply. The major clue really is from the OPEC and allies where the meeting in Vienna is going to happen in person after three years. This is tomorrow. Most of the personal oil ministers are going to meet in person after two years, as I said. So this meeting is quite important because ahead of this, there are a lot of statements suggesting that you could be looking at a biggest output cut that we've seen in last two years, anywhere between half a million to 1 million barrels per day. This is going to be a second output cut. The last we saw was much lesser at 1 lakh barrels per day. That happened in the month of August. So from 1 lakh to half a million to 1 million is quite a jump. And if that happens, that's exactly what the markets seem to be factoring in right now. Well, just to tell you that OPEC and allies in any case have been missing their output targets. They missed it by 2.9 million barrels per day for the month of July. So add to that, more output cut is something that the markets really seem to be dealing under in sense of supply concerns. In any case, the global supply deficit right now is seen at 0.6 million barrels. Add to that another 1 million, you will be looking at a deficit of 1.6 million barrels per day and that is what the markets are reacting to. In addition to that, you have the European Union ban on Russia that also takes effect from 5th of December. Markets also will be watching out for various economic data that has been coming in. The US non-farm payroll data on Friday would also set you the direction. So it's going to be quite important on how the markets move today, tomorrow, Friday's US non-farm payroll. So it's going to be a choppy crude oil prices. But most people that I have been talking to in the international markets would rather play it on the longer side in this commodity. All right, Manisha, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, so that's uh, commodities which are uh, getting bid along with uh, everything else out there. Uh, 343 on the Nifty. We are at 17,231, not very far away from, uh, you know, the, the day's uh, high. The day's high now, 17,250. Time for a quick break here on the other side. It's our special segment. It's the economy. Lata will get chatting with uh, Steve England.